What's up, Ozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to another Gravity Falls analysis video. Today, we are going to be looking through episodes number four to eight. Yeah, four to eight. We're going to ha have a look through all of those five episodes, and we're going to see if there's anything that we missed. I assume that there are loads of things that we missed. We're going to be looking at the journal pages. We're going to be looking for secret codes. We're going to be looking for blending in the background of each of the episodes because I'm sure we've probably seen him already anyway. All right, let's get straight in. Now, I, I actually want to begin by saying that um, I, I'm going to be changing up how I do the reaction videos from now on or not, not changing them up, but I'm going to be doing them in a specific order and I am getting help from Psychic and Inky, who you may know from the Dark Rooms podcast, and they are big Gravity Falls fans. And we are going to be doing episodes 9, 10, and 11 in one reaction. Then we're going to take a break, because in real life, there was a big break between episode 11 and episode 12. Then we're going to do 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and that should work really well, apparently. So we're going to be doing that. Um, but before we do that, obviously, we need to look through and theorize about things because that's that's a big part of my series. Obviously, I'm sure you cannot wait for episode 11 or episode 12 or whatever episode that you're excited for. I'm sure you can't wait, but we want to get through this slowly because I want to do theorizing and I want to do analysis and I want to try and figure it all out myself. So speaking of figuring it all out for myself, this is ridiculous. <laughs> there is so much information on the screen right now. So let me move this a second. So possible passwords. So obviously the password for F's laptop is an eight letter word. And Dipper was going through in the fourth episode, uh, trying to figure out what that eight letter word was. He tried overlord vomiting something, something crochet patuti, 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 patuti. Where have I heard that from? We've got thrilled, we've got spooking, craniums, like the brain, reawaken, uh, vocalize, volcanic, numerous, just a bunch of random eight letter words, I think. Then here we have codes. I don't know where this is coming from, but I'm sure we can probably figure out what this is. I'm sure it's probably, it looks to be a Caesar cipher. Let's see. Okay, let's have a look at this code. Let's just type it all in at once, I think. Let's do Z-L-G-G-O-H-V-K-L-I-W-H-U-Z-K-D-W-H-Y-V and then E-H-D-U-R. So some of them are crossed out and circled and underlined and stuff. So let's see. Uh, Widdle, as in um, the thing that... Uh, oh! Oh, I see. These are the keys. What? Why are the keys here? So, so in the first episode, the key, I think I have them all here. Um, or n not all of them, but here for the first episode in season one, Scary Oki. I need to update all of this. I haven't, it, I, there's just so many codes that it's hard to update this with all of the codes. But the first key for the Visionaire Cypher was Whittle. And then we have shifter and then whatevs. Interestingly, this one that's X'd out, the E H D is Bero, which is for the next episode. That's mental. That's crazy. Whatevs. So maybe there's more to this, right? Because I said while we were doing the episode, while we were looking through the Dipper and Mabel's guidebook, I said that maybe there is more to the codes than meets the eye, like the codes at the end of the episodes. Maybe there is someone um, talking to us through the codes or like, I don't I don't know. I, I feel like it could be someone from the future, like a time traveler or it could be Bill Cipher. Like, I feel like there's someone talking to us in code and this this strengthen, strengthens that theory because like, why is Dipper writing the keys for each of the episode? Like it, it's a fourth wall break, essentially. 
Um, so that's strange, right? That's very, very strange that the keys are right here. Um, but yeah. And then zooming out, there's even more here. So we have uh, a circled word in black light and we have an entire phrase in black light or whatever. whatever. Uh, let's see what this is. We have a K, F, I, V, V, M, V, I, T, B, M, L, G, M, L, G! Sorry, that was really cringe. H, P, R, M, Z, W, A, uh, Z, M, W, Y, L, M, V. All right, let's see what it is. Pure energy, not skin and bone, rising like the shepherd zone. Oh, it's a G, not a C. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> okay, so pure energy, not skin and bone, rising like the shepherd tone. Like the shepherd tone? What does shepherd tone mean? Shepherd to Oh, it's this thing! I know what this is. Um, so the shepherd tone is essentially an audio illusion, I believe, where it just feels like it keeps getting higher and higher, but obviously it goes on infinitely. But but you still you still feel like it's getting higher and higher, and it's it's re it's a really strange illusion. Let's actually listen to it, um, if I can. See, it, it 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 feels like it starts really low. It's getting higher. I've, and I feel like this phrase is talking about Bill Cipher. And this would be like Bill Cipher's noise. See, it's like, it, it doesn't, it never goes down. You expect it to kind of drop. But it just keeps going. I think my theory with this, and I, I, I haven't looked into this at all, so I might be completely wrong and I'm not a psychologist or anything like that. But my theory is that there are multiple of these, right? And so I assume as one of these is going up and up and up and up, there's actually another lower one starting and it's going up and up and it just keeps going like that. Uh, and I, I, I think there's probably a way you can loop it. Um, but it's, it's very strange, it's kind of creepy. I, I think there's also one that goes down, right? Shepherd's tone descending. Oh no, Th this one, this one is actually kind of horrifying. Oh, an ad. <laughs> this one's trippy. I really hate it. I really don't like it. it. Just feels like it keeps going down. All right, that's enough of that. Um, so let's think about the connotations of this. So pure energy, not skin and bone, rising like the shepherd tone. So probably talking about Bill Cipher, right? Because this episode is specifically about Bill Cipher. This is, if you don't know what episode we're actually in, it is sock opera. And this is the one where, um, essentially, Bill Cipher takes Dipper's body as like a puppet, uh, and it's it's a very it's a very good episode. But this is saying that he is rising without like flesh and bone, skin and bone, and he is pure energy. So that's strange. Um, I don't know why. I guess energy is circled because energy is key here. Uh, and, and there's also like the conservation of energy where like energy cannot be destroyed or created. It is always conserved, just like momentum and stuff like that. It's very, uh, very interesting. I like that. I like, I like that code. I think that's very interesting. I love how it rhymes as well. Uh, but yeah, that, that's really cool. I like that. I like that addition. All right, so here's the scene, right? And um, I, I talked about this in the book episode again as well. I keep saying episode. In the book, V 
video that I did, we talked a little bit, well, I, I said a little bit about how people were telling me in the comments uh, about, like, when Bill Cipher appears in this episode, it's actually in a dream. So I, I didn't catch it on a first watch. Um, I did actually ask on a first watch, like, is, is this a dream? Because it kind of feels weird that the moon would spin around and there's a big eyeball. It feels dreamy. Um, and, I, and I feel like, I mean, let's have a look uh, real quick. So he, co he closes his eyes. Yeah. So that was the inflection point there. Um, and I didn't really catch that on the first episode, but he's rubbing his eyes right here. Rubbing his eyes. Now it switches and he's in a dream now. Well, he's in a dream now. Um, the laptop shuts on him. The thing, the, the wind goes round and round and the moon spins to see the eye. Yeah, really, really cool. Uh, and and you, you find throughout this whole episode, I did catch it, that he, he's always tired. He's always rubbing his eyes. Like, I didn't get a great night's sleep. It's because he, he keeps falling into these dreams and he is seeing Bill Cipher in his dreams. It's really, really cool stuff. Um, and I, I love the creativity that I have with Bill Cipher. I think it's excellent. And once again, here is where we see Bill Cipher again. Notice how he is... I wouldn't say wide awake, but he is awake in this current moment. He is trying his hardest to find the secret of the laptop. And then he yawns. Okay, let, let's let's watch this scene in full. He yawns. That's the moment he falls asleep, right there. And then Bill is making this illusion that there are too many failed attempts and that the data is going to erase. And then Bill Cipher pops up right behind Dipper right about here somewhere here somewhere here bill cypher pops out but yeah he pops up right there they're in a dream right now obviously like the whole black and white scenery is really cool as well um kind of shows that they're in a dream but um but yeah like he he could have been um completely fine if he let that timer run it was all in a dream but I guess Bill destroyed the laptop anyway, because I think we see it in a future episode, destroyed. Um, so yeah, really cool stuff. Uh, <laughs> look at this animation, man. Um, he turns into the galaxy, I think. Yeah, there you go, shooting star. Mabel, shooting star. Uh, and then, this is where he flashes some scenes from their past. So that was the first ever episode, The Gnomes. That was the Time Traveler's Pig episode. And and, and notice um, uh, what Bill is trying to do here is kind of gaslight him into... Um, gaslight him into into what? Um, into not liking Mabel, essentially. Like, Mabel hasn't done anything for you uh, recently. Um, and yeah, Dipper saved Mabel in this episode. Um, or kind of, I don't know. In this episode, yes, he sacrificed that one timeline uh, where he, uh, where Robbie didn't get with Wendy, and he sacrificed that for Mabel to get Waddles. Uh, so yes, he sacrificed himself there essentially. Uh, and then here also makes sense. He gives up the air horn, um, which he needs to give back in order for Mabel to give to. Uh, Mamando, yeah. So I, I, I think that was um, that was pretty cool. Well, obviously it wasn't cool of Bill, but uh, it was cool to see them reference those previous episodes um, to show like genuine um, reasoning for for Dipper to kind of get back at Mabel or whatever. Um, yeah, there, there's the key in the background. We've seen this one cipher. Um, looking at some of the future episodes this is one of the easiest keys i would say uh it is out in the open it does blend in quite a bit but not compared to some of the other episodes um so yeah cool i've noticed that dipper flies through the floor here and usually oh 
I was going to say, we, we have seen before, on the pipe in the last episode of Season 1, we saw um, Bill Cipher will come back or something like that. Um, Bill is, I'm, oh, I'm always watching, I think it was. Um, and so usually they're going to hide things when, when you're going between floors and stuff like that. And absolutely there's something there. Is it like a... Is that a bug? Um, is that like a, an audio device planted in the house? That is... Yes! I think that's, that's the agent. That's the agent. Let's have a look at episode one. So episode one, we have these two agents. Yeah! Look at that! Agent Powers. So it's like an eagle symbol with... Oh, it's a magnifying glass. I thought it was like a pen going in his eye, but no, it's a magnifying glass with like an eagle. And then right here, yes, we have a magnifying glass um, with an eagle. Or an eagle with a magnifying glass, either way. Um, so that's like a bug, I think. Right? It, look, it looks like a bit like, like a walkie-talkie, but I think it's a bug that they've placed in the mystery shack. Oh, how interesting. So maybe there's going to be more story development with that. Because I did find it weird that they came up in the first episode and they just kind of ran away. Um, how intriguing. I wonder if that's going to have any more story to it. Or if we're going to see them again. Um, so that's really cool. Uh, I'm just looking at the people here. I don't, I don't think there's anybody we recognize really. Oh, I mean, like, yeah, there, there's no one we recognize. Uh, I, I love how Dipper's eyes go yellow and the big, like, moon things. Um, that sentence did not make sense, but yeah. Th there's no people here that we recognize. This is gross. I hate watching puppets kiss. <laughs> there you go. Oh. Oh! Oh, hello! <laughs> hello there! The agents are here. Are the agents spying on them? Wow! That's definitely the top of that uh, Agent Powers head. Um, let's have a look at episode one again. Look! It, no, that's definitely... Yeah, that's him. What the frick? So... <laughs> So the agents, so not only have the agents planted a bug in the mystery shack, they're also stalking the uh, Grunkle Stan and the kids. What? That's, okay, this is, this is crazy. This is a really cool find. So maybe we're going to see them in the background more. I wonder if they were in episode two or three. Uh, I'm now doubting my ability to find things like this. But there you go. Uh, crazy that we found that. I, I, I was actually looking for blending, but it's really cool that we found um, we found those guys. And so moving on to Seuss and the real girl. This is one of the keys of the Visionaire Cipher that I have hated the most. It is, it's because it's on the screen for genuinely like three frames. I'm not even kidding. Um, this is Tiger Fist, I believe. That they're playing, that he's playing. All right, so we are taken to the mall. Okay, let me make sure that I've got a full view of everything that's going on here. So we're in the mall. Got overalls are cool now. This is Wendy's friend. Um, got pizza man up here. Build a beaver. I lo I love build a beaver. One of my favorite places um, when I go to the UK is. Build a bear, build a bear workshops. They are freaking cool. You basically get to. I'm, I'm assuming they're like around the world as well, um, but essentially you get to uh, make your own bear. You put the stuffing in. You can cl uh, put clothes on it. Uh, <laughs> wait. <laughs> uh, well, that was that was good timing. Um, wow. Uh, but yeah. You, it's a really cool uh, little shop and I have a few bears. I don't have them here, but um, I remember when I was like three years old or something, I had a bear with like a football top on or a soccer top. Uh, I think I still have it. Um, but yeah, the agents are also here. 
what the frick? And look, Stan is looking directly at, well, actually no he's not, but he, he's probably seen them, he's probably seen them walking around, but they're not very uh, discreet here, like they're, they're very out in the open, but wow, that's, that's cool, so the agents keep appearing, maybe I'll have to look back in episode 2 and 3 to see if the agents even are, are in the background of 2 and 3, that's so weird that they keep watching them. So I've learned a new trick, right? I'm going to go to Google Translate real quick, and I'm going to show you. If we go into Google Translate, you can actually translate images, which is insane. Uh, so let me go down here and see if this actually does mean anything. I don't think it will. I don't, I don't think it will be Japanese, uh, but it would be really cool if it was. Let's have a look. Wow! Wow, that is so cool. 9 out of 10 Romance Academy. 9 out of 10 Romance Academy. I think it's called, Rom yeah, it's called Romance Academy. So that, sa that says 9 out of 10 Romance Academy right there. Wow, that's a really cool tool that I'll need to use more often, I think. Uh, and I'm assuming there are more, I think there are more Japanese words later on. So we'll have a look. Uh, I think it's actually here. So let's have a look what these say. It's really cool that we can do this. It's so cool. Uh, wait. Okay, so so that says romance, and I'm assuming the bottom one is going to say academy again. Uh, in fact, it is, because I remember that hyphen being there, and I was like, is this real Japanese? But no, academy seven? Wait. Ac romance academy seven? It is romance Ac academy seven. I didn't even realize there's seven here. So this is the seventh romance academy. Password. Fixing it one. Funnily enough, that is eight letters, so I, I wonder if you try fixing it one in the <laughs> in the laptop and it might it might work. But there you go. Uh, what does Shizen Hacker mean? Shiz Shizen Hacker? I mean, I wouldn't say it's cheating. Uh, I, I looked up Shizen Hacker and somebody on the Gravity Falls Reddit said one of the options on the opening menu it's Shizen Hacker, which roughly translates to a little which means spontaneous combustion. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's so weird. So I think there's some Japanese here, yes. So, when the cherry petals of Magic Romance Academy are in bloom. I'm gonna assume this is gonna say that, but it would be really funny if it was a bad translation or something, which, uh, cherry Blossom Petals from the Ro Magical Romance Academy. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's less dramatic, I'll, I'll put it that way, but yeah, it's, it's, it's nothing, I don't think. Um, and then there's more, I believe. More afterwards. Isn't there? And, and, and Tiding Can Had Plen. That's, that is the code that we got at the end of that episode, and uh, I didn't know what it meant, but obviously it's a it's a reference back to this line. Uh, so thank you in the comments for for telling me about that. And hiding can have pl had plan. Let's see, because I have a feeling this is a rough translation, uh, and that's the that's the whole joke. But what does it actually say? It says it's blooming. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good, actually. I like that. It's blooming. I don't know what's going to happen. Okay, cool. I like that. I like that a lot. Okay, guys. So, here is Giffany, or Giffany, uh, in her Doki Doki Literature Club classroom. Love points, zero. Charisma, zero. Health, 100. Health, lives, <laughs> damage, and baggage. <laughs> baggage. And then we have the day and the hour as well. So this is what I'm worried about right here. Is this math on the on the chalkboard. So obviously we have like loads of drawings around here, but we have H equals P with an accent times P with an accent all over 2M plus V of R. I don't know if that's going to mean anything. I'm assuming it's just random math. Um, yes, of course, I'm impatient, date me now. Hey, look, a squid. 
these options. Uh, here we get a closer view. Okay, so we have 4 plus 9 equals 13, obviously. Uh, I don't know if you can properly see this, but I'm going to take a screenshot of it anyway. So that is definitely H equals P with something on top times P with something on top all over 2M, I think it was. Um, was it M or N? Are we sure it's M? It says M here, but funnily enough, when they zoom in, it turns into an N. <laughs> That's weird. But okay, so let's see what this is. So P with a hat um, or P hat is sample proportion. Um, so it's it's to do with statistics. Uh, if you have like a binomial distribution or something, you have um, yeah, define the number of successes by total number of observations or trials. So yeah, it's just the proportion of successes essentially. So if I, I don't know, if I try and shoot the target like an archery, uh, and I shoot three times and I hit the target once because I'm so bad, then p hat is going to be a third. But I don't think that this is what that's referencing. Um, I I wanna I that that has to be that has to be something. I think in the episode I said Planck's constant, um, but like it's it's absolutely not. Uh, I think I was just getting the H, um, but it's it's very different. And I don't know why it would be Planck's constant. I I think that's completely got nothing to do with gravity falls. To be honest, <laughs> I should shut up. Oh, the three D Schrödinger equation. Hold up. Okay, that is exactly. That's exactly what that is. So, I don't know anything about what that what three D Schrödinger equation is. All I know about Schrödinger is obviously the infamous Schrödinger's cat. And in quantum physics, Schrödinger's cat is essentially a cat that is locked in a box, and it has half a chance of dying and half the chance of staying alive. And in if you don't if you don't look in the box, there is an uncertainty principle essentially that says that the cat in that box at the time at which it could be half dead or half alive is both dead and alive. Um, and that's Schrodinger's cat. There's a lot more to it than that and I probably explained some of it incorrectly because I haven't looked too far into it. But uh, that's what's that's what this is giving me the 3d schrodinger equation so schrodinger is it edward schrodinger ed edvard schrodinger or something oh it's i think it's erwin yeah erwin schrodinger uh is a scientist from the 19th century uh or 20th century um and okay so we can develop quantum okay let me read this and I'll come back to you because I'm sure you don't want to read quantum mechanics with me. Okay, I think in order to understand the 3D Schrodinger equation, we're going to need to start by understanding the 1D Schrodinger equation and see what it relates to. So let's have a look. Schrodinger's equation in one dimension. So, oh my freaking god, that's some compl- is that phi or psi? I think that's psi, as in like psychology. And that's the, that's the Planck constant. That is the Planck constant right there. So, oh god. So I was sort of right when I was saying Planck constant because Planck, the Planck constant is essentially, oh, I don't know how to explain it, but it's it's like the smallest thing that can exist in the universe or something. Um, and you, you have multiple um, Planck measurements. Uh, I, I can't explain it, but... Uh, but like, I, I want an explanation of what it actually shows. Like, what what is what is the Schrödinger's equation in one dimension? Um, it is a complex equation. Uh, but what what is what is what does it show? Oh wait, here we go. So it's a partial differential equation that governs the wave function of a non-relativistic -relativ quantum mechanical system. Oh frick. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful maths. I don't know if I can go anywhere with that, though. Um, okay. It's it's the quantum counterpart of Newton's second law in classical mechanics. Um, and that is... I think that's F equals M. Force equals mass times acceleration. Um... Oh my god, this is getting my physics brain out, which I haven't used in years. 
Um, given a set of initial conditions, Newton's second law makes a mathematical prediction as to what path a given physical system will take over time. So essentially, I think what this is, is it's a very simplified, one-dimensional way of showing what a particle will do in a quantum state, I guess. That's my best guess. Uh, and then the 3D, the three-dimensional one is obviously for three dimensions. Complex plot of a wave function that satisfies the re non-relativistic Schrodinger equation with v equals zero. So this is this is on like the right path. So my question then, and I want to tie this back to gravity falls. Obviously, I would love to look into this and to actually understand what's going on, but I'm not going to, because that's just going to take too much time. And look at all the math right here. There's so much. Here's the Planck constant. Following Max Planck's quantization of light, Albert Einstein interpreted Planck's quanta to be photons, particles of light, proposed the energy of a photon is proportional to its frequency. Sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I want to tie this back to gravity falls. What does... What, what's the use in Schrodinger's 3D equation being right here? What's the point? Um, and that's a really good question because I don't know. I, that is that is a lead that has gone nowhere, I think. But it's really cool that we can tie that to Schrodinger's equation. A again, it ties to the matrices, right? Actually, it does. It ties to the matrices that we found in the very first analysis video where we looked at that screen, uh, the intro screen. Um, and, and we saw the matrices and we figured out that it was a linear uh, mapping of uh, 2D coordinates to 3D or the opposite way around. And again, we have something here in a 2D place or related to a two dimensional person or creature or whatever that is trying to like, like that knows about three dimension, three, three dimensions and knows that three dimensions exist, but wants to come out into the three dimensional world. So I think it could be to do with that, but I don't know why it would be about quantum mechanics at all. Maybe, maybe as well, the fact that Giffany is both dead and alive because like, it's not really a thing that's in, in, I, I can't, I can't quite word what I'm trying to say, but like, what, what's the definition of being alive? I, I guess it's, I mean, your definition of being alive is probably different to my definition of being alive, but like from a scientific definition of being alive, like I, I, a beating heart, like a brain consciousness, like what's what's your definition of being alive? I guess you, you can't really place a finger on whether Giffany is dead or alive here. And I'm sorry, because my MacBook is currently on low battery, so I got to put it on charge. Now, whether any of that was accurate at all or um, useful in any way, I don't think it is. That was a very interesting discussion point, at least, I think. Uh, and it was really cool that we were actually able to find this equation online as Schrodinger's 3D equation for quantum mechanics. So I really like that. Um, I really like that, like the Simpsons almost, that they, they put real world maths and physics into this because it, it, it's a show about mystery and it's a show about science and the crossover between the supernatural and the natural um, so I really really like that they put those sorts of details in boys it's Bill Cipher <laughs> it's Bill Cipher as Doki Doki Literature Club moniker just Bill Cipher just Bill Cipher I'm kidding. Um, it would be really cool if it was revealed that that was Bill Cipher, though, that was trying to come into fruition. And that's why the Schrodinger equation is there. Sorry, I'm, I'm going to stop talking about math for once. Um, and I'm sure most people are going to appreciate that. Got some games in the, in the back. Horse Dad, Laser Wizard, Virtual Owl Trail. The Invisible Wizard joke never came back. I wonder if that's going to come back at all, or if we're going to find out if the Invisible Wizard is actually real. But yeah. Um, so this is episode 6, Little Gift Shop of Horrors, and people have told me 
that I was correct in my assumption that this was non-canon. But unfortunately, this is the one episode, I think, yeah, the one episode where I haven't found the key. And <laughs> I don't know how much I want to try and go through this. Um, I might just look up what the key is, to be honest. Uh, because I don't know if I'll ever find it, really. Uh, <laughs> Crone Alone Magazine, Witches Be Trippin'. $39.99, are you kidding me? Let me just go through this episode, and then I think at the end, we'll probably look up the key. Uh, and just do it like that. Obviously, I don't want to give up, but apparently a lot of the keys in this are extremely hard to find. And when I see where this one is, I am probably going to cry. Um, with how difficult it was to find, but, you know, part of the fun is making up your own rules, so I am going to probably have a look at what the key is. Oh, I'll never survive in this market. <laughs> uh, okay, here we have another page of the journal. Now here's the thing, don't think it's canon. Don't think this is canon, so we have to keep that in mind that this page is not canon because it was all made up in Grunkle Stan's head. But uh, Perception Rooms, love that. Uh, I love this, this is really, really cool with the uh, the glow, the, uh, what's it called, black light. Uh, and I really like the idea of this actually. I like that the, oh my gosh, what's it called? What's, what's the brain stem called? I forgot, but maximum brain power, Normal brain, super brain, mind augmentation. I love the idea that there's a mushroom out there which looks like a brain and you can crush it up and put it on your forehead and your brain will expand. Or eat it, as uh, as Waddle shows. I actually want to listen, and oh my gosh, I cannot believe I missed this, but apparently Waddle's is voice acted by Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> and I, I, I cannot believe I did not piece that together when I was watching. It's so distinct now I hear it. Um, but I want to listen to some of the things that he says because I'm sure that he says some pretty complex scientific stuff and I'm sorry if you didn't come here for a science lesson but uh, I'm sure it's really cool to hear and to listen and learn new things. Okay guys, believe in yourself, episode 618. So, here's the thing. I thought that was six six fingers there, but um, first of all, those are toes, ozone, and secondly, there's only five, so whatever. Um, so I've been told in the comments by a lot of people that 618 is Alex Hirsch's birthday. Great, fantastic. I just wish people would stop telling me things. Um, it is so annoying when I'm like, please don't spoil things, please don't say anything about these sort of things. And people just do it anyway. It's it's genuinely really annoying because it ruins the experience for everyone. Um, and and the reason, and like, fair fair enough, I, like, I really enjoy your passion for the series and I really like that you felt like you should tell me that and congrats for knowing that information. But like, think about it. Would you rather me come across it in an episode and react to it there? Or would you rather me sit in my bedroom having a look at YouTube and getting a notification pop up saying Alex's birthday is 618 or whatever? What what would you rather? Like, I, the, what I want to do at the end of the full series is talk to some of the guys that really, really enjoy this show. And they're going to show me through some things that I missed and some really cool facts about the series, and you're gonna see my full reaction. The other thing that I got spoiled on is the fact that uh, there was actually a leak that Old Man McGucket was the author of the journals, um, instead of the actual author of the journals, of course, and that Alex Hirsch planted it himself, and it, it's really cool to hear all about that, but like, now you don't have my initial reaction to that. I, I heard about that the other day, but you don't, you don't see me react to that. Um, so it, it's, it's unfortunate when that sort of thing happens and I just wish people were more wary of that. Um, but there you go. So episode 618, the reason we're seeing the number 618 
so much is because that is Alex's birthday, I assume, uh, 18th of June, and probably his twin sister's birthday too, <laughs> seeing as, you know, they're twins. Um, all right, guys, I have given it in, and I've looked up where the key is. Hopefully, I'm not going to see any spoilers by doing this. Um, that's my biggest worry. Apparently, it's here. Okay, wait, let me let me have a look in the actual episode and see if it, it is here. Okay, this frame. I don't see it. Maybe it's uh, in a different... F oh, that's... Oh, no, 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 no. That's so ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Let me turn up the brightness for myself. Yeah, okay. Well, my brightness was down a little bit, but... Like, granted my brightness was down, but... That's so... So... Harsh. Like, what? So, here it is uh, on the banister. Key... N-O-N-C-A-N-O-N... -N -N dot, I guess. <laughs> um, no, that's... that's that's not great. Um, well, I mean, it, it, it is great. It's a great hiding place, but how am I by myself supposed to find that? I've heard people saying that some of these um, Alex Hirsch was worried people wouldn't find, but obviously there's a whole community behind Gravity Falls that are able to solve it relatively quickly. Um, but like the fact that I am me by myself there's going to be things that I miss. There's going to be keys that I miss. There's going to be some codes that I can't crack. That's all part of the show. Uh, that's all. That's all part of my reaction to all of this and my me trying to solve all of this. So I'm going to find. I'm going to not find things sometimes. But I was never. To be honest, I probably skipped over the scene about five times, and I never found this. Um, and I don't think I was ever going to find it. So. There's the key, non-canon, um, which is funny because I probably could have guessed that was the key if if uh, if I guessed the right thing, but I don't know. Um, so I, I'm not feeling great about that one, but non-canon is the key for this code. So here we go. Wait a second, guys. Wait. Google Lens allows you. Google Lens allows you to take text and copy it. Oh my god, like take text in an image. So really, Google Translate and Google Lens are insane. <laughs> They're so cool. Um, so I can literally go into my Visionaire. Oh, this was the... Uh... <laughs> so this is my code in my previous video. There was, a, uh... there was another code in Caesar that said... Uh, look in the description. In the description, there's a little riddle, and from that, you get the key papyrus. And the code was this at the end of the episode, and it it comes to never gonna give you up, never gonna let you down, uh, which is of course a Rick Astley song. <laughs> never gonna give you up, never gonna let you down, never gonna turn around and desert you, never gonna make you cry, never gonna say goodbye. Never gonna tell a lie and hurt you. Okay, here we go. Check out Dr. Waddle's late latest book, A Brief History of of Oink 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 Oink. <laughs> um so a brief history of time was that a Stephen Hawking book? Yes, A Brief History of Time book by Stephen Hawking. I think I have this. No, I have his I have his one on black holes, I think. Uh, is that here? I don't know. But yeah, A Brief History of Time is written by Stephen Hawking. One of the greatest scientists of our time. And um, no pun intended. And uh, and so that's a reference to that. Um, check out Waddle's book. A Brief History of Oink, 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 Oink. 
That's funny. That's great. That's a cool one. That that was... I would say that's rewarding, but we didn't get the key, so I can't really say if it's rewarding. But if we did get the key by ourselves, that would not have been rewarding because of how hard the key was to get. Uh, at least tell me, like, who the author is. Like, come on. <laughs> there you go. Um, cool. And then next we have the Society of the Blind Eye. Sorry, I have to keep pushing this up a little bit. Society of the Blind Eye, which was obviously uh, foreshadowed to us in the Dipper Shorts right here. Uh, if only all of the images would show up, but yeah, the Dipper Shorts, we, we got the symbol for the, the blind eye, which is really, really cool. Uh, and, and I was theorizing about that, like what, what could that be? Uh, and we did theorize, I think, that it was like a crossed out eye, so it could be blind or it could be... Oh yeah, because we did, we got the code as well in episode 20. This was the first time we had to use this combination code. And the code was search for the blind eye. And now we've found the blind eye. Um, so actually, this can be marked green. And also, up here, um, yes, I remember doing this. In Irrational Treasure, we found this mad code in on the twelve on the minus twelve dollar bill, um, and it said blind. We we found the word blind found by taking the sum of its digits pairs and using an A one Z twenty six cipher. Crazy, absolutely crazy um, decoding there. But we found very, uh, like, a semantic field of blindness um, and eyes. Uh, so we, we, we keep getting uh, references to the blind eye. And it's really cool that there was this whole episode on it. I wonder if it's going to go any further, but probably not because the blind eye has now been destroyed because of Dipper. Uh, he, he wipes their memories right back at you. Uh, so suspicious townsfolk. Oh, yeah, who's the author? So suspicious town townsfolk, they put old man McGucket is not likely, which I I can see he's he's kind of crazy. Toby determined, lazy Susan. He got some fingerprints, gossiper. Yeah, it's kind of like a load of baloney, but um, that's cool. So and then this message, okay, fine, blah blah blah. Uh. <laughs> And here we have the broken laptop. Obviously, Bill did destroy that in the end, even though a lot of that was only in a dream. And McGucket Labs. So this was when we initially saw this, we were like, yeah, McGucket is the author. But then it was revealed that he he's not the author. He worked with the author because he had his own lab. He was the creator of the Society of the Blind Eye. And he knows about the portal and stuff, which we'll get to later. Here is a whole page on the blind eye. So what does it mean? Can't be unseen. Oh, there's a code. There is a code. Oh boy, what is this? What the frick? We've never seen this. Okay, wait. So, fine. So this, fuel gauge. This is the portal. This is a load of guys, like a guy getting sucked in the portal and this is how they're making sure that we can get him out again or something. Main circuit, we have some oscillating, we have a sine wave essentially. Wow, did not know that existed. But um, but on, then on the next page, of course, we have the blind eye, can't be unseen. Uh, are we gonna be able to decode that? Do we get the full code? That's my question. Maybe when, when we zoom out in a second, do we get it hit? <laughs> that was really funny, seeing him fall. That is a very suspiciously shaped lamp right there. <laughs> right here, sir. Uh, very suspiciously. S s yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, can we see the full code? Because I want to decode it. Oh, we do get it. Though it is very, very small. Eek. Eek is what I say to that. Eek. So here we have our substitution cipher again. We've we've seen this multiple times. Lion Monster, Snappy Dresser, Ice Ice Baby. This whole thing about the portal. And now we've got another one. 
Uh, it might actually just be easier to do this on paper, but you're gonna see, basically I'm, I'm currently setting up my camera and my whole setup, because uh, you'll see I, I am in a different place. Um, but I, I am going to be setting up a camera so you can see me write some things down, write some notes down, so that's gonna be cool. Um, that will be coming up soon. So let's solve this. So 14 and then 17. Uh, this might take me a little bit, so uh, I will speed this up or do whatever I have to um, to make sure you're not bored. <laughs> Okay, I think I've got it. That took a lot longer than I thought it would actually, <laughs> but okay. So I'm gonna copy this formula and paste it here. And we wanna take K, K56. Bam. All right, let's have a look. Okay, it looks good so far. I'm not reading it, I'm not reading it. I'm not spoiling myself. I ain't spoiling myself. Okay, and then here, put it down there. Here, put it down there. And here, put it down there. Okay, we have, if my suspicions are correct, this is the work of Fiddleford. Does he really have to go to so to such great lengths to forget, I assume, is what it's gonna be. Is 14, uh, wait. I messed this up, didn't I? 14 is an I. To I, I or, or get it. What? <laughs> I don't know if that's correct, but the rest of it is really cool. Um, if my suspicions are correct, this is the work of Fiddleford. Does he really have to go to such great lengths to forget? Wow. So he's talking about the, the Blind Eye Society, the Society of Blind Eye because it's on that page. Uh, and then the author is writing, this is Fiddleford that has done this, AKA Old Man McGucket, because uh, like, why, why does he have to go through such great lengths to forget the things that he's seeing in this book? So the author is writing about the blind eye saying, basically Old Man McGucket created it. Why is, why is he doing this? Why is he trying to forget? Why is he? Why is he wiping his memory to forget? I I just I <laughs> I really want to go back and listen. Are we blenching? Yeah, we blenching. I live up in a mansion. I freaking love that song. I've listened to it on YouTube as well. Are we blenching? Yeah, we blenching. I live up in a mansion. Are we blenching? Yeah, you blenching. I live up in a mansion. Bam. What is the FM on? Uh, the radio. It's on 84. I'd say that's 84. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, what was that? Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> They're everywhere. They're freaking everywhere. I love how I caught that. I, I just saw something flash. Yeah, they just flashed by and I was like, there are these humans must be important. Because like, why would they animate? He why would they go through the, the trouble of putting humans there? That's insane. So they're there as well. They've been in every episode that we, that we've been through today, apart from. Apart from Little Gift Shop of Horrors, um, so that's the third episode, we've seen them cameo in. So they're gonna come back at some point. That's wild. That's crazy. Oh my gosh. Okay. Sorry, I, I, I literally just wanted to listen to that song, but um, can't do anything without without them being there. So in the Blind Eye Society, we have all of these people uh, that we have met before. So, and, and the end code as well. Um, it, it was actually referring to these people that were in the Society of the Blind Eye. One of them was Chandra's um, Shanders rejects or something uh, and that is that's relating to Toby determined because uh, he has a crush on that news reporter and that news reporter is called Chandra which I didn't I didn't get um, when I was doing that code Bud gleeful right here is of course Gideon's father and one of the things in that code was 
Gideon's tantrums. So he, basically he wants to forget Gideon's trans tantrums. And then the other three, I don't know what they're relating to. I cannot remember the code and I think I accidentally deleted it. Yep, I am so stupid. I did not write the code down anywhere. Uh, let me have a look in my episode actually. Um, but that's... So here we go. Okay, so I think I actually did this wrong. I think it's actually a different way wrong because then it rhymes better. So I think it's Gideon's tantrums, misspelled tattoos, Chandra's rejections, society's views, a fear of witches, a life of regret. These are the things they try to forget. So there you go. That That is the, that's def definitely the code. Um, but either way, Gideon's tantrums, bud gleeful, 100%. Misspelled tattoos, it's gonna be uh, this guy who has head and chin on his head and chin. Um, where's the part where they reveal who they are? Wait, what? Oh, here we go. Yeah, so it's this head chin guy. Oh my god, why can I not find... Okay, there we go. So it's that guy. Um, misspelled tattoos. Fine, so we have one, two... And then we also have a fear of witches. Oh, that's so funny. Fear of witches. So I was like, where is this guy from? This guy was the person who had the pig sty and gave Mabel the pig in the Time Traveler's Pig episode. So, and, and he was like, are you a witch? Um, and that was a really funny defined joke there, but I completely forgot that that was the same guy. So there you go. Fear of witches as well. Cool. A life of regret. A life of regret. I guess that could be this guy, because like he he married a woodpecker, so he's scared of like regretting his life decisions or something. Chandra's rejections, society's views, these are the things they try to forget. I don't really know about the other ones. Um obviously Chandra's rejections is that one. But these four have, have clear um connections to that code. Um, so that's that's really cool. Uh, I really like that they they tied it to that, and I can't believe I didn't get that when I um, when I solved that clue. But yeah, uh, and then here, this was something I thought was awesome. First of all, tentacled monsters might be one of my greatest fears, like ever. That's genuinely terrifying. Where has that monster come from? The fact that it resides in Gravity Falls is insane. The fact that it could be behind any tree at any moment and Dipper and Mabel have missed it, like, it, it, that's just terrifying to me. Um, so scary. Like, giant squids and stuff. Oh, I can't. I freaking cannot. Um, so there we go. Even here, I think this is a floating eyeball. Yeah, so an eyeball just comes up to the surface and they run and there's, there's the society, the blind eye. And they have forgotten about the open eye. This guy's head has morals, knowledge, but size, form, weight, color, time, fear, denial, dreams, hope, snacks, the ladies, and mom. Love how the ladies is in a different part of his brain from mom, but pra practically the same place. And then here, we have, oh wait, no, I've gone past it. No, I haven't, Never mind. Here we have one of the craziest reveals in Gravity Falls thus far. And that is that Old Man McGucket created the Society of the Blind Eye. And the fact that there's there's the portal here, that, that that's very clearly the shape of the portal that Grunkle Stan is creating. Instability versus time, probability of failure. So over time, it becomes more and more unstable, that portal. Uh, and I think that's actually what we're seeing in the end credits right here. Uh, where the portal is becoming more and more unstable, but Grunkle Stan doesn't seem to care. He doesn't have that regret because he knows that it's worth it in the long run. He's been trying to do this for 30 years, for God's sake, like, of course. Um, right here, we have some interesting scientific stuff again. Um, so this is, again, the, the whole wormhole thing. This is, if you look back at, um, literally right here, Right, in, in the final episode of season one, there's like this this wormhole thing again, and then there's there's the upside down triangle with a circle in it, aka the portal. So it, it's again the wormhole, and people have correctly told me that wormholes um, don't just send you to parallel universes, they, they just, it's just like a 
cross between space and time. So I could go through a wormhole and appear in China, for example. Um, it's not necessarily a parallel universe, but like wormholes are wormholes. Uh, I think what, when I was talking about um, wormholes being the cross between different universes, I was specifically talking about Einstein's field equations. Um, and, and even like here, it, it's, it's big support, E equals MC squared. This is very clearly connected to Einstein. This is what Einstein was trying to figure out. Um, like the origin of black holes, how black holes work, how they're related to white holes and wormholes and portals to different universes and stuff. This was something that Einstein was very keen on investigating and it seems like uh, the same thing was true for Old Man McGucket. Uh, and here is the portal to show evidence of that. Um, strangely we have upside down triangle, golden ratio, um, I would say this is delta but delta is upside down from this, um, but this is phi, um, oh wait, yeah phi was also down here, I remember talking about the golden ratio, but phi is right there, so that's the same exact symbol, that's the same symbol as right here, so there you go, I don't think it's proper maths or it has any implications, but there you go, um, that's that. I guess you could also um, talk about the instability of um, Old Man McGucket over time with the blind eye. Um, over time and instability, uh, the instability increases. This turns into a blind eye instead of just the portal. It's really, really saddening and, and I did cry during the episode because it's, it's a really horrible origin story of how Old Man McGucket came to be who he is today. Um, it's quite scary actually. I hate another car! Uh, I can't do a good impression of him. Oh, fiddlesticks! Oh no, that's, that was awful. That was more like Mickey Mouse. <laughs> and here we go! I see! So, so right here, it flips over to this page again. There's the alchemy symbol once again, the zinc. Uh, and this is the page that we were talking about before. And this is old Mama Gucket looking through, and then of course it it transitions over to to Grunkle Stan. So it seems like, right, Grunkle Stan, old man McGucket, and the author all work together, because old man McGucket obviously worked with the author as as was told in this episode, and Grunkle Stan has a six fingered glove. Whose glove was that? That was the author's glove. So. It seems like these three worked together. It's interesting that Grunkle Stan and Old Mamma Cucket are both voiced by Alex Hirsch. Maybe that means that Seuss is the author. <laughs> no. Um, but there you go. So that's uh, strange theories for you. Here is Seuss's driver's license in Blendon's game. I really liked Blendon's game actually. It was really, really cool. It was really insightful for Seuss and Blendon as well. Um, and how that will work. So his his real name, his first name, is Jesus or Jesus, I would say. Alzamarino. Alzamarino Ramirez. Cool. Uh, a little Seuss signature here. With a pentagram. Of course. Uh, organ donor, date of birth, 713. So we now know, we know that this episode has to take place on the 13th of July, 2012. 20, 2012? 20, <laughs> I'm starting to sound like 20-12 now. 2012. In 2012, July 13th was Seuss's, I think, I, I love the photo that was taken here. It's very cool. I love the red eyes. That's a great touch. Um, yeah, 10A26 BG Class C. Uh, Oregon driver's license. I don't think any of that means. Oh, 32 Shambrot Drive, Gravity Falls. That's where he lives. Okay, cool. I find it funny the continuity errors between some of these scenes. Obviously, it's because of how um, it's because of how it's animated. Like, I think last season we we found that Dipper had book number two, and I was really confused because I was like, why, why does Dipper suddenly have book number two? But it was just an animation error. Right here. He has a postcard saying it's from Las Vegas. And it turns out I went the wrong way. It turns out it's actually New Orleans. <laughs> but there you go. Um, 
Obviously, he had multiple ghost cards from his dad. Um, yeah, and I, and I heard actually, I saw a comment saying uh, that his dad never says Seuss's name. Uh, he just says, hey champ, or something. Um, it's, it's possible that his, his dad doesn't even know his name, which is, which gives him even less reason to see his dad, if you know what I mean. Um, so there you go. Blending appears. I'm sure there's not gonna be any Easter eggs in this white room. <laughs> I love the world building in this. Look, this is the guy who has head and chin on his head and chin. This is his first ever tattoo 10 years ago. That is crazy. This is the policeman. <laughs> oh my God, he has so much hair. He has so much hair. Um, so there you go. This is, doesn't this, isn't this guy bald? I don't know, but he has a completely different style. Bud's auto just had a baby sale. Demon. <laughs> RV was here. Robbie V, okay, fine. And there's Robbie. Chasing, what's his name? Uh, Thompson, I think that's Thompson. And then Toby determined. The dream goes nowhere, Toby. That's what Mabel says. Oh, shucks. <laughs> and then here are, here's Wendy and a friend. Obviously, they look very similar. Uh, familiar, sorry. And then uh, she's like, uh, Wendy thinks you look cute. So maybe, maybe there could be more to this whole Wendy and Dipper situation, but I assume not because they were, um, they were babies at the time. Yeah, see up here. So if you can't see, it says, sorry champ, couldn't make it this year. Real busy again. See you next year for, he crossed out SU and then wrote short. I'm, I'm confused why that's crossed out, but yeah. He doesn't seem to have much care in the world for Zeus because he is exploring the world. Look at all of the places he's been, man. Let's have a look. We have Texas, New York, Arizona, Massachusetts. Uh, I don't know how to say that word, so <laughs> I probably said that wrong. Sorry, champ. Sorry, champ. Yeah, he never says Zeus. He literally never says Zeus, so he probably doesn't even know his name. It's so sad. It's really devastating. Um, that, hang on a second, hang on one second, that red balloon is not suspicious or creepy at all, I'm sure Pennywise isn't gonna jump out of nowhere, uh, okay, I love how there's an arcade right here that says game over, save and quit, rage quit, or f f f f f f f f f f f yeah. Uh, I'm just thinking right now, I forgot to look at something. I forgot to look at something. I'm assuming there's going to be nothing else in here anyway. Um, oh yeah, this is how he gets hired. Cool. Uh, I forgot to look at the places that uh, Blendin has in his clothing. It's always weird to say that. <laughs> I always find it weird to say... Look at, look at what's in Blendin's clothing. It just feels so weird. Um, okay, so let's have a look. Okay. Because I'm sure, just like in season one, I'm sure this is going to be uh, a callback to the past and subtle foreshadowing. Okay. So, do you recognize these places? That is... Is that... Pacifica Northwest's house? Uh, let's have a look in Gulf War. I have a feeling this is the same house. It, it looks the same at least. Um, so there we have like a hedge, like a hedge uh, and like a statue and then really tall building. I mean, we can compare if we want to. Uh, yes, that looks to be the same place. It looks similar, at least. Um, I mean, look at like the lamps, right? I, I, I know the windows aren't perfect at all, but it's a tall building. It has like, it looks kind of Victorian in a way. Uh, and, and roof. Yeah, I mean, it's similar. It's similar, It's it's got the same vibe to it. So what would that what would that mean? Uh, either 
Uh, either that means it's just a callback to the Gulf War episode, or we will be seeing this house later on. We'll be seeing more of Pacifica, which I believe we will anyway. I think we might see more of Pacifica and see um, more of Pacifica and Mabel's relationship kind of grow. Um, so that's cool that that could be Pacifica's house. Police station? We haven't seen that before. L okay, literally a beach. What? And that's it? Okay, weird. We haven't seen any of those, really. Um, so I'm I'm really hoping that that's going to be foreshadowing because that's going to be really cool to remember that that appeared in Blendon. Okay, well then, I've actually spent a lot more time recording this than I thought I would. I thought it was going to be pretty quick, but there was actually a lot in there. So uh, I, th I thought that there were a lot of really cool Easter eggs that we found today, and I really hope that you enjoyed this video once again. Uh, yeah, and, and the next thing we're going to be doing is watching the next three episodes together. And then we're probably gonna do a theorizing video because I've been told to do a theorizing video. And then we're gonna take a little bit of a break because I think I just wanna watch the rest of the series by myself so that I get the least amount of spoilers possible. Um, so I think that's gonna be really cool to do. Anyway, let me know what you've thought of this video and let me know uh, if you're excited for the next one, <laughs> I guess. Uh, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.